So in our last video, uh, you would have seen that we'd got our new BMW S1000RR together. My friend Bob had built it over the winter. Um, it's a 2019 model, um, which should have come at the beginning of 2019. It was a year late because of BMW production problems. But um, in any event, over the course of winter 2019 and uh, 2020, Bob turned the bike from a road bike after he'd run it in into a full on race bike. And uh, we got to the point where it was all together, but we couldn't quite start it because there was an error message on the dash. Yeah, well, um, the change, the big thing is the bike runs now. Right. Obviously that's a massive difference to when you last looked at it. We'd um, negated to uh, order a plug, a connector which connects to um, the uh, RCK, the BMW race control kit. And we needed that to uh, program the ECU to get the thing to fire up. So the lead came, um, and I also had two connectors around the wrong way at the front of the wiring loom. Yeah, um, and that was a nice man at Alpha told yeah, you. Yeah, from that last video, he realized what I'd done. So I swapped these two connectors around and the thing fired up immediately. Looks beautiful. Thank you. It is beautiful. Done, uh, something that's a little bit different to the exhaust as well, isn't it? Around the other side. Um, Let's have a look. Yeah. Got this neat little. Um, what would we call that? Well, that's kind of a guard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, sort of like a foot guard, heel guard, or or whatever on the exhaust. That's very pretty. Uh, doesn't make any difference. It's just purely aesthetic. Um, and all I've done really since you last looked at it, Mick, is just tidy it up. Yeah. And. Um, just fettle it but over the last few days I will say this um, oh, I was really having trouble with the electronics um, because the um, RCK kit that we've got needed some new drivers uploading and I've been struggling to do that um, so I've had loads of help off the last over the last few days off of Dave at HM Racing and uh, my old mate Phil Crow as well both have been um, really really good in uh, helping me out I'll tell you one thing I will say and everybody says it that, um, if you've got one of these things if you've just bought one um, they're really noisy I mean the engines are really noisy so much so that um, I was actually quite concerned um, that it had something wrong with it but everyone we spoke to BMW and all the people in the know assure me that um, they're just noisy yeah. so um, there you go set your mind at rest just in case uh, just in case you ever have the same uh, concerns that I had recently um, so we were going to go to Aragon to test uh, at the end of February and then the wheels fell off of the world um, so we couldn't do that and um, we've had to wait until June to get our first run out on the bike and uh, and we did just that it's fantastic <laughs> We went to uh, an MSV track day at Brands Hatch and uh, just before I go on, that was really well run. I mean, it was probably only a couple of weeks into lockdown restrictions being eased and uh, social distancing measures in place. But it, for me, ran better than a normal track day. There was no um, faffing on the day, really. A lot of it's done online. So your signing on is done online, your safety briefing is done online. Um, you've got to queue up for wristband and to show your license. But back then anyway, it was a two meter rule. So the queue was nice and socially distant, which uh, suits me. Um, and as always, the MSVT track days go like clockwork. So we've got loads and loads and loads of time. Spoiled a little bit by the weather, but um, we got to, to run the bike out for the first time and it ran faultlessly. We had a little bit of a tuition session from uh, Dave Carnell at HM Racing, who showed us around the electronics. Um, it's kind of quite understandable if you're used to modern road going super bikes with all the rider arrays that it's got. Um, but the thing that makes it different to the road bike are that the rider aids are more tailored towards racing. So they're kind of less intrusive, a little bit more helpful. The anti-wheelie and traction control is now an ignition cut, as well as throttle uh, butterflies. So it, it's an audible cut, bang, 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 bang. So you can actually hear it. So it's better to lean on. Whereas before, the uh, 
the restriction when you uh, open the throttle was was so subtle you couldn't really feel it um, but now it pops and bangs and the other big thing is that the BMW road bike has split throttle bodies instead of um, four in the line there's two and two uh, and that comes from the world of MotoGP and world superbike until it was banned and uh, superbikes are only allowed to run what the road bike has got which is why BMW have got split throttle bodies to begin with um, as a road bike uh, it works four together so they don't act independently but as soon as you've got the race kit on the BMW calibration kit like we've got they can act independently so Dave Carnell has given me uh, a rider mode where all four work together and a rider mode where they work separately and the idea behind these split throttle bodies is that it basically reduces the power and it's kind of a prevention uh, for traction control rather than traction control being the cure so the idea is that you won't have tire slide in the first place so the electronics don't need to control it um, and what that basically leaves you with is a bike that is a twin cylinder 500 the whole time unless you absolutely gun it so for my first couple of sessions at brands i ran the bike as a normal bike with the the four working together and immediately felt how much lighter and more nimble the bike feels compared to my old bmw so the immediate difference is the agility and the lightness uh, it's probably got about 215 bhp at the back wheel we haven't actually dynoed it um, that's um, standard engine with a, a Kropovich pipe from um, Performance Parts. Um, so you've got a lot of power uh, and a lot of grunt because the engine's got shift cam. And on the road, it basically turns the bike into a 1300cc high booster. It's got so much grunt. And uh, coming out the corners at Brands, it would just whoosh out the corners. It was beautiful. And all controlled by uh, traction control and anti-wheelie. You couldn't really use the anti-wheelie on the old, old bike because it was too harsh, too intrusive but now you can lean on it. Um, and basically what that does is makes the bike less physical to ride. So every time you accelerate out of a slow corner, you're not trying to climb over the front, trying to keep the front wheel down, you can just pin it. Um, and uh, it, it's still an animal to ride, but it's much more friendly. Um, the brakes are really good as well. They're not Brembo's anymore, they're Hayes calipers, but with the uh, SBS dual carbon brakes we've got in, um, the brakes are amazing. Um, so kind of got used to the bike as it was it feels physically small and all day I couldn't keep my toes off the floor even though I was trying to tuck them out of the way um, it's got KTEC suspension which uh, KTEC have helped us um, set the bike up giving us some base settings and got no problem there but overall the bike feels quite low we since found out that um, KTEC do fork extenders so you can raise the bike up which um, we're now going to get uh, and I think that will help. So uh, that's going to be another plus point. And also what you've got to remember is up until this year, very, very few new S1000RRs were actually racing. So I think in the British Championship, you basically had Tyco and Bathams, and that was it. Well, maybe one or two other small teams. Um, but this year was the year where everyone's got their bikes and you're going to see them a lot in Superstock and Superbike. So all over the world. So now that kind of learning process of what makes that bike tick will be accelerated and um, you know, you better hit the ground running easier without too much sort of development. Other people will be able to give you advice. So then it was time to try the dual uh, throttle bodies, um, which is insane. I've ridden on them before on factory super bikes when we've been lucky enough to ride them for tests for MCN. And what happens is as you drop into a corner, um, you've got two cylinders, so the power is really, really docile. Sounds like a twin. S sounds weird, especially my bike as well. It makes all these strange firework noises now. Off the throttle, you've got the electronic engine braking control, so the bike pops and bangs. Then it goes onto two cylinders, and it starts grumbling and moaning, and blah, 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 blah. and then coming out the corner, it starts to crackle as it goes onto four cylinders. And then the electronics help you again to um, control wheelies and slides and whatever. So it's always making a fantastic noise. Um, but what is strange about it is by default, oh yeah, about the super bikes, I've always been glad that, um, that it's been there, that system, because they made the bikes really safe. So the last thing you want to do when you're testing a Johnny Ray's bike is to uh, throw it into the scenery. So the fact that bikes feel really docile is, uh, is quite handy. 
but to go fast on them is another um, thing altogether because from the moment you leave the awning or your pit carriage, the bike is a twi twin cylinder. So you've actually got to slip the clutch quite a lot just to get it going. And when you get out on the track, what you realize is, unless you absolutely hammer the throttle, it stays as a twin. So the basic idea is if you ask for a certain amount of power out of a corner, like 60% torque say, out of clearways, the bike would give you as much of that torque as it can on two cylinders before finally saying, okay, we're gonna to start to give you four. And then when that happens, the, the throttle butterflies slowly start to open and it slowly graduates the power in so it doesn't come in with a bang. Um, it completely negates the shift cam because the bike isn't grunty anymore. And in fact, it just feels gutless. So to begin with around track, I couldn't really keep up with any of the other bikes that my bike could just zap by before because you, you you graduate the throttle out of the corner like you would do normally and the bike just doesn't go anywhere. So you kind of got to learn to get on the throttle sooner and much harder than your brain is telling you to. And then you can start to use what you've got, basically a twin cylinder bike in the corners to, to get momentum out the corners, to get speed. And then the, once the bike's upright, it chimes in. By the end of the day, I kind of got to a point where I was relatively fast by no means uh, properly fast. I mean, I'm very ring rusty anyway. The last time I raced was in January at Phillip Island where I got taken out and I broke my hand. Um, and it's a track day environment, so it's not really fair to um, just go barging past people. But, but anyway, we got to a certain point where I was relatively fast. And um, the way to go fast with it is just to open the throttle and to trust the electronics and just hang on. Obviously, if you open the throttle too early, it's just gonna send you wide. So you still need to do the correct line and, and ride how you would normally, but you've basically got less power to worry about at that kind of danger stage. So the big question is, when are we gonna go and race? Well, we've got another track day basically planned um, at the end of July. Track days are filled up thick and fast. It's very hard to get spots. So that's our next outing. When we race again is a little bit more of a difficult question. Until things are much safer um, for everybody, we might sort of take it carefully to begin with. We'd like to maybe do a European round if we can this year. We did a endurance race, uh, the 200 Milia at Mugello last uh, two years ago, and it was amazing. Uh, we'd love to do that again if we could. And that's in November, so you never know what's gonna happen in the world, but. That's where we are at the moment with the bike. I've absolutely loved riding it. It felt like it was too short and sweet. Um, left one in more, but that's always a good thing. Snetterton 300 is the next one, and uh, we'll report back after then. Uh, Brian, if you're watching this down under, 